season, and we have a couple of teams that are looking pretty unstoppable. Yeah, thanks, John. Some of the teams are performing at a really high level right now, and this looks like it could be one of the best boys hockey teams in Marblehead program history. But let's start today with our gymnastics team. They lost their meet against Beverly this week, 140.15 to 126.35, which drops the team to 2-2. Two and, two. and the Magician's swim team looks to be one of those unstoppable teams. They improved to 6-0 and with a 105-78 to win over Beverly, a team they expected trouble from. Kylie Cronin placed first in the 50 free, Zach Michaels won the 200 free, and Katie Walker was the top diver of the night. This week, the boys' basketball team went from a reasonable-looking 4-5 and five to an unattractive-looking 4-7, and seven, losing both of their games, adding to their second three-game skid of the season. On the 15th, they lost at home to Lynn English, 63-55. They led the Bulldogs after the first quarter through halftime, and they were tied at the end of the third, but Lynn's pressure for forced turnovers in the fourth, and they got the separation that they needed from the Magicians. Teddy Bosley had 16 points to go along with a Derek Marino double-double. He had 16 and 14, and Bo Millett chipped in 7 and 10. Then on the 19th, the boys lost at Classical, 65-46. Classical hit seven threes in the first half, which Marble had never recovered from. And again, Teddy Bosley led the way in scoring. He had a season-high 20 points for the Magicians. The girls' basketball team is now 7-3, and three, winning both of their games this week against Lynn. It's nice to see our girls taking care of business with two wins over subpar competition, bouncing back from that really tough home loss to Beverly last week at the last second. On the 15th, the girls beat English 54-35. Junior Lindsay Walker had a huge game with 21 points and 10 rebounds. She's been great on the boards lately. Junior guard Nicole Fredo added 10 points and grabbed 8 rebounds, and sophomore Colby Shea dished out 10 assists to go with her 8 points. And then on the 19th, the girls battled Classical, and they edged the Rams 48-42. Junior Jenny Norcross dropped in four threes and finished with 15 points to lead the Magicians. All right, let's talk some hockey. The boys' hockey team is a historic 11-0-1 right now, and they have the talent on both ends of the ice that could definitely win a state title. Braden Haley and Tim Kalinowski are an absolute powerhouse on the front line for the Magicians, and they're numbers one and two respectively in scoring in the Northeast Conference. Both are also top three in assists, and Kalinowski is second in total points, while Haley holds third. And if that kind of offensive skill and the goaltending they're getting from first-year junior starter Ronan Cunningham continues, we could easily be the top seed and the favorite to lift the trophy at the Garden come March. The guys notched three wins this week, first on the 16th at Danvers. The guys shut out the Falcons 5-0. And what did Braden Haley do? Oh, not much. He just had a hat trick. And Kalinowski, not much there as well. He just passed to Braden on all three of the goals, and he scored twice for a total of five points. Just another night on the rink for the black and red, no big deal. And then on the 18th, the boys skated all the way out to Agawam and won there 5-2. Just kidding, they took the bus, but they did play hockey. Even though Tim Kalinowski's play could have melted the ice, he went for another goal and four assists for his second straight five-point game. Goalie Ronan Cunningham stopped 15 of 17 in net in the win as well. So then here comes the big blue trying to dethrone and upset their rival. Ain't gonna happen. An 8-3 score fest for the Magicians got the job done. Another hat trick by Braden Haley and nine combined points by Haley, Kalinowski, and Coffee is what the black and red are bringing to the table. So who's hungry? For the first time this winter, the girls hockey team looked hungry. And they won back-to-back -back games, improving to 4-5-2. and two. So they're right there. They were finally able to string wins together behind some great goaltending by Sarah Ryan, who was named the Marblehead Fitness, Fitness Center Player of the Game in the team's 4-2 win against Medford. Captain Hadley Woodfin had a goal and two assists to lead the Magicians. Sydney Cresta, Cresta scored twice, and Caitlin Clark also scored. The game was covered by MHTV and can be seen Friday, January 22nd at 7.30 p.m. and then Saturday, January 23rd at 4 p.m. thanks to our community partner, National Grand Bank. And then the following day, back-to-back -back games don't happen too often, so there could have been some tired legs, but the girls didn't seem phased at all, and they beat Bishop Fenwick 3-1. Bella Peters notched an unassisted goal with 10.5 left to play to break the 1-1 tie and lift Marblehead to the win. Caitlin Clark's second goal of the game was on a late empty netter that sealed the deal. The wrestling team battled Gloucester but couldn't pin down any of those slippery fishermen, and they lost 43-24. 
And that's all the time for today. Thanks for watching Headliner Sports. I'm Jess Burton. I'll see you next time with more good news. John. All right. Thanks a lot, Jess. And that concludes this week's Headliner. I'm John Caswell on behalf of the entire news team here at NHTV. I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.